By the end of this lesson, you will be able to write formulas for covalent compounds and also write names for covalent compounds. So in previous lessons, we talked about how to write formulas and names for ionic compounds. And there are a bunch of special cases with ionic compounds, and it can get a little bit complex. Covalent or molecular compounds are a lot simpler to name and write formulas for because they all use the same prefix system. So here's a list of the prefixes for numbers 1 through 5, which is what we're going to limit ourselves to today. Uh, and you use these prefixes to indicate how many atoms of each element there are in a particular compound. So, for example, if there is one atom of an element, you would say mono and then the name of that element. Two atoms of an element is di and then the name of that element. There's one little exception. If the first element listed in a compound uh, has only one atom, you don't say mono. You would leave it out and it's just understood that there's just one. And then, just like with ionic compounds, the second element in, listed in a compound gets the ide ending. So let's jump right into a couple examples. We're going to go first from the formula to the name of the compound. So here we have CCl4. C is obviously carbon. And you notice that uh, there's really an invisible one right there. And because there's only one carbon, you might think that it should be monocarbon. But because carbon is listed first in this formula, you just say carbon and the mono is sort of in implied. And then Cl4. So this means that there are four atoms of chlorine. So four is tetra, and then chlorine becomes chloride. So CCl4 is carbon tetrachloride. Next example, CO2. So same example, the same case with the carbon here is that there's just one. So we're gonna write carbon, and then O2. Two is di. And oxygen becomes oxide, so carbon dioxide. And finally, P2S4. So P is phosphorus, and 2 is di. So we have di phosphorus. And then S4. S is sulfur, and 4 is tetra. And sulfur becomes sulfide. So try these five examples, hit pause, and hit play when you're done. All right, let's go through the answers here. NH3, so the N has an invisible one here, but since it's the first element, we don't have to use mono, so we can just write down nitrogen. And then H3, so three is tri. Hydrogen uh, becomes hydride. And we end up with nitrogen trihydride. This actually has a common name that you've probably heard before. Nitrogen trihydride is actually ammonia. And you'll hear the name ammonia more frequently than the name using the prefix system. CF4, there's an invisible one here, but it's first, so we just write carbon. And then F4, 4 is tetra. And then fluorine becomes fluoride. And notice the U comes before the O in fluoride. Check your spelling there. H2O, this is obviously water. That's the common name that we use, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. However, you can name water according to the prefix system as well. So H2 becomes dihydrogen. And then since there is one oxygen atom, and it's not the first element, we do have to use mono. So it would be monoxide, but we're just going to smoosh that together into monoxide. So the prefix name for water is dihydrogen monoxide. P3O5, 3 is tri and P is phosphorus. And O5, 5 is penta. We're going to leave the A off and then oxygen becomes oxide. So triphosphorus pentoxide. Very similar, P2O3, 2 is di, and we have phosphorus, and then O3 becomes trioxide. Great. So let's reverse this. Here are the names of some covalent or molecular compounds. You are going to be writing the formulas. So let's do a couple together, and then you'll try some on your own. 
So dinitrogen, nitrogen is N and the di stands for two. And then monoxide is just a single oxygen atom. Carbon tetrachloride, carbon, and there's no prefix, so that just means one. And then tetrachloride, chloride is chlorine, so it's Cl, and then tetra is four. Oops. Oxygen difluoride, oxygen, there's no prefix, so that's just one of them. And then fluoride is fluorine, and di stands for two. And finally, sulfur trioxide, there's only one sulfur atom because there's no prefix. And then oxide is oxygen and tri is three, so it's SO3. So pretty simple. Try a couple for yourself, hit pause, come back when you're done. All right, let's go over these answers together. Nitrogen trioxide, you should have NO3. Carbon monoxide, very simple, it's just CO. There's one carbon and then monoxide is one oxygen. Dinitrogen tetrahydride, so this is N2, and then hydride is hydrogen, and tetra is four, so N2H4. And finally, diphosphorus pentoxide. Phosphorus is P, and di is two, and pentoxide is O5. The biggest mistake I see people make with this is trying to change the places of the subscript. You only cross the charges when you're doing ionic compounds. In covalent compounds, the prefix goes with the element that it's attached to. So don't try and change their places. So here's a bit of a challenge. These examples below could be ionic or covalent compounds. So you need to figure out if they're ionic or covalent and then write the formula if they give you the name like letter A or write the name if they give you the formula like letter B. So hit pause and come back and check your answers. All right, let's check our answers here. Iron two nitrate. I know that iron is a metal and nitrate is a polyatomic ion. So that is a big hint that this is an ionic compound. So let's write out the work here. Iron two stands for iron two plus. Nitrate is NO3 minus. Since it's ionic, I am going to cross the charges and we end up with Fe, NO, three, two. Make sure you've used parentheses there. N2, Cl2. Nitrogen and chlorine are both non-metals, so this must be a covalent compound. The two is represented with the prefix di. So this is di, nitrogen, di, and then chlorine turns into chloride. Oxygen difluoride, there are two hints here. The di means that it must be covalent, and also oxygen and fluorine are both nonmetals. So this is covalent, so we have one atom of oxygen, and difluoride is two atoms of fluorine. MgOH2, so this has oxygen and hydrogen in it, so it might look covalent, but it also has magnesium, which is a metal. So this has got to be an ionic compound, and the OH is a polyatomic ion. So Mg is magnesium. I'm not gonna write di because it's ionic. And OH is a polyatomic ion called hydroxide. And finally, copper one fluoride. Copper is a metal, fluorine is a nonmetal, so this is ionic. And this copper has a Roman numeral one, which means that it's copper plus one. Fluorine is F minus because it's in group 17. Cross the charges and you end up with CUF, very simple. All right, so by now you should be able to write formulas for covalent or molecular compounds and also write names for covalent molecules.